thank you very much. And uh, it's a nice meeting. And uh, uh, my name is Yu Chen. I'm from State Key Library of Wild Knowledge, China. And then, so today I'm going to um, sh uh, talk about the, this topic uh, to overcome the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. Um, so I will introduce these four. One is what are coronaviruses? Um, so um, several years ago, uh, WHO have listed the, the disease that likely to outbreaks in the in the future. But unfortunately, uh, so far, I think at present, uh, most of them uh, are not be uh, received uh, enough research and funding, or they have no ways to uh, to to control this um, uh, disease. So there are they have listed eight. Uh, different viruses, including such as we know that uh, Ebola and Marble, some other uh, viruses. So within these two, uh, within these eight viruses, there are two from coronavirus. Uh, one is the SARS and another is MERS. Uh, <clears throat> so if we are looking uh, for the history of coronavirus discovery, so it has been found for for hundred uh, almost one hundred years, but in the I think before two thousand and two, before the outbreak of SARS coronavirus, and uh, most uh, I mean research are focused on the uh, uh, coronavirus which infect uh, the the animals. I think. Uh, so people, they will not uh, focus on the so much on, on the coronavirus research work. So, and so far, most of people have uh, have known less about the coronavirus. Even after the two thousand and two, after the outbreak of SARS coronavirus, because it disappeared very soon. So it's still this coronavirus uh, infection is ignored by most of the virologists until uh, uh, the, the SARS-2 outbreak. So <clears throat> and if we look at why they call the coronaviruses, because that uh, this is a cartoon of these viruses, as you can see that on the uh, a face of the surface of this virus, there is a lot of uh, spike proteins, and then it looks like a crown. So they named as coronavirus. <clears throat> and in fact, coronavirus has a, could infect a, a variety of mammalians and and, and birds. As you can see, almost the, um, all the mammalian animals, uh, including the birds, could be infected by coronavirus. So far as we know that we have uh, uh, identified uh, seven human coronaviruses. And the first four, they just uh, infect people and they didn't show much more, I mean, disease to the human beings. So they are always be ignored by all the peoples. And most of them, their infection were be seen at a, a influenced by influenza virus. So, <clears throat> and uh, the last three, I think most of the people uh, now, they are familiar with this last three common viruses. And uh, uh, in the natural, uh, because we have no that bad carry a, uh, carry a variety of pa passengers, and uh, uh, from a lot of report have said that uh, from bad to humans, maybe uh, it will be the how the virus uh, transmission to, uh, to to the human beings, but they still need some uh, intermediate. Uh, host such as 
uh, this camera in the in the Middle East, they 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 spread the MERS coronavirus. Um, so if we if we look at other coronavirus, each of them are not a a I think is is very important because each of them, if they infect the host, a uh, they will cause at least the more than I think more than sixty or seventy percent deaths. So it's a very important pathogens. Um, so the coronavirus can uh, divide into four genus. Uh, as you can see, the first group is the alpha coronavirus. Uh, they infect, as you can see, two humans and pigs and dogs, a camel, cat, like this. And uh, uh, the beta coronavirus, uh, they infect uh, human beings and other uh, mammalian animals. So with these two groups, uh, we we believe that maybe some of the virus they can uh, transmission between the human and the mammalians. And then the third is gamma coronavirus. They infect uh, such as birds and weir in the sea, in the ocean, and uh, uh, the Delta so far, they mainly infected the uh, uh, birds. So this, uh, we think that the virus transmission between the uh, 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 the birds and then the man in the ocean. That's because maybe only the bird who which can fly and contact with the uh, mammalian animals in the ocean. Uh, so if you look at this and then they can infect uh, almost the, every systems of the uh, hosts and cause very severe diseases. Um, so coronavirus is very uh, special uh, RNA viruses uh, because they have uh, possessed uh, the biggest uh, genome uh, in RNA virus so far as we know. Uh, if, if we look at these pictures and the, most of the RNA virus, uh, the genome is less than, it's around 10 uh, kilo. Uh, is 10 kinonucleotides, but coronavirus, the genome of coronavirus, they are about 30 uh, kinonucleotides. And uh, uh, this is the structure of genome of coronavirus. Among all the coronavirus, you can see the identity, they have uh, uh, around 54% identity. Uh, the the, the first uh, two in three parts in the five prime end, they encode the, uh, the, the non-structured proteins. And then, so the identity you can see is a little bit higher uh, than the structured protein and accessory protein coding region, just like this, as we uh, uh, indicated here. So uh, it's, it's so the, the 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 replication and the transcription is uh, is the most uh, is most complicated among all the RNA viruses. For example, um, so because it's the positive single strand RNA viruses. So once the RNA uh, was injected to host cells, and then this uh, RNA could be uh, translated directly uh, to the to the to two uh, polypipe uh, polypeptide. One is uh, PP1A and one is PP1AB. So for the PP1AB, there is a, a minus one reading frame shift. Uh, they change the open reading frame and to uh, translate a, a huge polypeptide and this polypeptide was cleavaged by themselves and then to form uh, 16 non-structuring proteins and all these proteins they may be a, a former transcription and replication complex uh, to 
trans uh, to replicate our uh, transcript uh, the genome or start genomic RNAs of this coronavirus. And this is the uh, structure protein coding region, uh, which they can among all the coronavirus, they have four main structure proteins. They are the same. Uh, it's S, E, uh, S, M, E, and N. Uh, these four proteins. Um, besides these four main structure proteins, and there is a lot of uh, a severe, uh, a lot of uh, different accessory proteins. As you can see, for example, this is the SARS-2 and this is MERS and this is us, they are different from each other. So, and this is the uh, life cycle of, of coronavirus. The first, uh, at least the, so far as we know, they have two uh, different ways to entry. One is uh, they can incorporate in the endosome and another model is they can uh, and bind and entry uh, to the host cells directly in the cell membrane. Once they uh, release his genome to the uh, into the host cell cytoplasm, and then the ribosome of the, the host ribosome they will directly translate the uh, polyprotein one A and polyprotein one A B, and then they can form the uh, replication complex, and we see in this replication complex, and then they can generate a lot of uh, subgenomic RNAs. Uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting because these uh, subgenomic RNAs, each of them, they can code different structure, protein, and accessory proteins. And uh, these accessory and structure proteins, they can and uh, they can form the new virus particles and the release. So this is the uh, how they, the the coronavirus infect the human, uh, the, the the host cells and how they replicate. But most uh, uh, interesting things is that uh, although um, Coronavirus was being found for almost 100 years, but uh, uh, from from 1983, uh, people found that there might be uh, there's people do not know how they they replicate and transcript. Uh, from that time, there are three possible models, and then uh, people have spent a lot of years to figure out how this coronavirus replicate their genome and subgenome. Um, uh, after the outbreak of uh, uh, SARS coronavirus uh, in 2005, uh, we have uh, identified and observed a lot of uh, elective strains uh, subgenomic RNAs. And we proved that um, there are a the negative. Uh, we we proved that the ex existence of negative chain this this continuous replication and transcription, I think, it is is proved by us. And we have uh, uh, issued and and. The, Proof the model how the coronavirus replicates themselves. For example, uh, this is the genome of the coronavirus here. Uh, it's a single strand uh, positive, and then when they replicate uh, the negative strand, and then when when they start from from this this side, and then uh, there is a lot of. Uh, uh, um, uh, reg regulate sequence um, uh, within this body region, and then one uh, existed located in the leader sequence here. Uh, when they when they replicate to each of this uh, TRS body sequence, 
as we mark the red color here, they will stop and uh, randomly. Uh, we do not know how, how, so far we still do not know why they stopped and uh, how they jump, but indeed uh, they, they stopped uh, randomly at each of these uh, uh, TRS body sequence here. And then they jumped uh, to the TRS leader sequence here and continued uh, to finish the transcription. So in this way, and you can say they will gen generate a lot of uh, a subgenomic minus a strand uh, viral RNAs and with different lengths here, you can see a lot of, and with this uh, negative strand RNAs, and then they synthesize the uh, positive strand of subgenomic RNAs. And with these RNAs, they can translate as we show in previously, last slide here. And you can see uh, with this different uh, lens of positive subgenomic RNAs, they can translate to different kinds of uh, structuring proteins or accessory proteins. So because these different accessory proteins from each, each coronavirus, for example, a SARS and SARS-2, maybe they are, uh, plays an important uh, roles to show different uh, pathogenesis. Okay, sorry. So, um, because the previous study so far, as you can see, uh, until 2010, people use the traditional way, such as Northern blood, the first generation Sanger sequence, um, to uh, investigate uh, the scientific uh, uh, questions and uh, until 2019, they use uh, people use uh, a direct RNA nanopore sequence. This is the third generation uh, RNA uh, seq with the human colonized two two nine e. They have uh, shown a more uh, detailed uh, landscape of this uh, coronavirus but it's not enough, far from enough. And uh, uh, after the outbreak of uh, uh, SARS-2, so we use the uh, second generation NGS sequence, and then the third generation nanopore RNA directly uh, 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 sequence, then we to try to define how the the coronavirus, especially the SARS-2, they replicate and the transcript. And uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, discoveries. Uh, for example, a, before this, all the virologists that think that a, they only jump when they synthesize the negative uh, Substrate uh, subgenomic RNAs of coronavirus. But in this funding, in our recently researched work, we show that uh, at, the at the subsequential a uh, positive subgenomic RNA synthesis, there are still they have a lot of junction here. So with this uh, high resolution uh, on a seq technology and you can identify there was a lot of uh, subgenomic RNAs uh, when the virus replicating the host cells. Uh, the number of different subgenomic RNAs is far, is more than what we can imagine. So, so far we do not know why they generate so many uh, subgenomic RNAs and what's the function and how they uh, regulate to generate different lengths of these subgenomic RNAs. Um, and the second topic is uh, identify the, the 
the the the passengers of COVID nineteen. Um, so so far as we know, there are three epidemics in the history uh, for the coronavirus. One is SARS, and the second is is MERS, and uh, uh, the latest one is the uh, SARS two. And uh, for SARS two, as you can see, that uh, it's already a a a is pandemic all over the world. Uh, but before this, even uh, there is uh, there there are there there were SARS and MERS. Uh, people do not think it's a big pro. Uh, it will cause a big trouble to the human beings. So, as as I mentioned, that uh, including a lot of fundings and companies they ignored this kind of uh, passengers. I think, but nowadays I think a lot of a uh, a. Uh, Governments or 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 companies they have uh, spent a lot of money to try to improve the uh, the res basic research work and uh, uh, the drug discovery or, or or even the the vaccine development. So far, we we think that it will be uh, come very soon to overcome this uh, pandemic of all over the world. Um. Um. So. Uh, as you know that uh, um so the a novel the the, the novel coronavirus were first reported uh, in Wuhan China and uh, so this is the story how we identify these passengers I because we have a <coughs> monitor a network between the uh, university and uh, the research institute and then the hospitals uh, without the outbreak uh, we uh, regularly they send some samples from the hospital to to the university or to the uh, research institute to monitor the 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 um and the passengers among the the society. So, I we got this sample at Jan, January two, two thousand, and and then uh, this sample is from two patients with unusual uh, and 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 this sample is a uh, is a bath is a uh, um. And then we we first performed the, the RT PCR to identify. At that time, we use SARS specific uh, try to to figure out whether it's SARS uh, re-emerging, re but um, but but it's uh, but it's no. And then so at January fourth, we started the uh, the NGS. Uh, sequence uh, preparation, and uh, the second day we complete this uh, uh, NGS sequence uh, and 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 get the data, and and <clears throat> and uh, at January seven, and we get the sequence data and identified as a, a novel coronavirus, and uh, we have reported this. Uh, um, uh, data to the uh, to the government, and uh, uh, as you can see, if you compare this uh, uh, coronavirus, because uh, this was identified by the Wuhan University, so we named this as uh, uh, WHU uh, one and WHU two. As you can say, is uh, is a little bit close to. From here is a little bit close to the SARS, but uh, if you uh, look at uh, uh, the the detailed data, uh, you can see that it's not SARS because SARS is here, and there's a still a long distance, and it's 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 very close to, to some bad SARS-like coronavirus. But uh, if you if you compare the uh, the SARS two with uh, the bad SARS like 
uh, coronavirus, you can say that it's still they have a lot of differences. It shows that they, this is a, a, a normal coronavirus uh, never have been found in the in the human society. <clears throat> so, I uh, we have a uh, a. Uh, we are the first team that in the world to upload the raw sequence data in the database. And uh, we even we upload the sequence in the gene bank, bank immediately. Um, so because in the lower, because in the February, uh, during the February 16 and 27, as you can see, there is a reporter from Chinese government and WHO that they have listed a lot of uh, 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 SARS-2, and these two are uh, identified by our by by us, and then they have listed, and all this data are available in the internet. So, um, so at that time, around January 10, 2020, there were at least the four. Uh, at least five independent library of China have identified these uh, passengers and uh, uh, reported to the world and on, on, online. Uh, for example, this uh, with this, uh, we have uh, uh, we have uploaded a sequence to to the NCBI, the gene banks, uh, but the last uh, okay, Fudan University all, always also reported it to the. A gene bank, and then the la the 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 first three they have uh, a, a a uploaded the sequence uh, to to this uh, to this uh, data database, <coughs> and the the third topic is the uh, accurate tool for for the detection, um, because um. At the beginning of this uh, epidemic in Wuhan, so we have found that a lot of patients, uh, when you use the RT-PCR to detect the uh, the virus from the patient's throat samples, most of the a lot of people they show that negative report. But if you scan the uh, the lung, the, the patient lung with, with CT, or if you check the uh, uh, the clinical status, it shows that these people are, are in need, in fact, with uh, SARS-2 and is, is already sick. And a, a lot of uh, doctors have issued these questions, why the RT-PCR cannot uh, detect uh, uh, the nuclear acid of of of, of this uh, virus at that time. So we have uh, a uh, start this research work, and we uh, uh, established uh, two different uh, systems. One is uh, with RT PCR. One is with the digital PCR because the digital PCR they have a zero or one readout. So it's very suitable for detecting the low viral load uh, spacements. So as you can see, if you use the RT-PCR, uh, this is the, this sample is from patient. And then if we dilute it, uh, so even with morgue, with these systems, as, as you can see, this uh, primary is the, uh, from, uh, American CDC N1, and this is from the Hong Kong University N. Uh, and uh, and uh, as you can see that, uh, even with the morgue, they can report as the positive. And uh, here, if you dilute it with uh, lower wire load, uh, with this uh, primer and uh, and the probe set, they still report as negative. So they can both the false positive and negative uh, report uh, could be easily to see with this uh, technology. But if you use the uh, digital PCR, and then it's, it, it will be very easily to, this is the same samples 
just with and with, with the same primer and, uh, and and probe set as you can see here and it's, it's very easy to distinguish the minus four dilution between the mark and uh, uh, we also uh, launch a, a collect the patient samples from the hospital and uh, we calculate and we test uh, and calculate very carefully and uh, with this uh, data as we can say for example the sensitivity uh, with with 90 percent i see and you can see they are uh, pretty much improved so with this uh, um based on the uh, digital pcr we have uh, established uh, a lot of uh, uh, clinical assistance uh, uh, diagnostic libraries uh, especially in in the universe uh, in the hospital in wuhan and try to help the doctors to to further uh, to confirm the infections of uh, SARS-2. And uh, uh, this work was also published uh, two papers uh, in, in, in EMI. So uh, because at that time we first published a paper uh, in the in the Madaraxiv, this is a preprint uh, which they can let you to share your research work as as soon as possible or over the world. So once we have uh, established these systems, uh, we first uh, 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 submit our research work to the uh, to to this preprint uh, web websites, and uh, so the um so the Jack. They are from America, and then they just uh, repeat our uh, uh, ways. So uh, they said that we used the method that come out from China and uh, adapted it to see if uh, it would work for us. And then their comment is, is it works. And uh, they have uh, uh, report this uh, their discovery and as a news immediately. And from that time, we have um, um, helped more than 30, uh, 30 hospitals and uh, uh, the detection department all over the world to establish this high sensitivity nuclear acid detection technology systems. And uh, uh, maybe I think maybe one month or somehow uh, this this way was used by uh, BioRed and then uh, one company from China. Both of them, they have uh, developed a commercial test uh, case. Uh, both of them have obtained the, the FDA authorization. And uh, uh, they use this uh, kit to detect the uh, low viral load samples to improve the uh, to improve the detection of this uh, corner of this uh, SARS-2 infections, and then uh, the part four is the tra transmission and control. Uh, as you know that, and uh, because we know that the COVID-19 they can spread by the droplet, uh, is no doubt. Um, but for the aerosol transmission, it is still some people can do not know. And at the beginning, even in China, in Wuhan, there's few people they will face masks. Uh, and so I think it's a, uh, so this is a, uh, and then when some uh, virologists issue these uh, questions, even in China, there are a lot of people they are talking about and uh, afraid of this uh, 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 issue. And so we launched uh, uh, a research work. We collect samples from the, as you can see, the hospital, I, ICU, and then the uh, the the fountain. You know that this uh, at that time. 
there were a lot of uh, temporary hospitals which built a, in the temple or in the in the in some some theater or some other places, and we checked uh, we collect the uh, the L from different uh, places to check whether uh, they have the uh, whether they have the virus particle in the in the aerosol. As you can see, for example, this is a Fangchang Hospital. It's a temporary hospital, and you can see indeed you can check you can you can detect uh, some viral particles uh, in the aerosol. And uh, some places, for example, the ICU, I, uh, I, uh, some, for example, the uh, there is uh, well, you we can see. Oh. Um, sorry. Okay, for some places. They uh, remove they remove their protective uh, clothes uh, rooms and then there you can say there are a lot of uh, virus they can detect it. So that means it's possible uh, for for the for the coronavirus to tr transmit by the by the by the by the aerosol. So it's an elbow transmission model. So and when once we report this and there's uh, from uh, the nature and science and and even the uh, Academy of American they have uh, uh, reported this uh, to the president uh, uh, Trump and to, to to try to persuade that people all over the world to wear the the face mask. So what I can say that from that time the Chinese government have. Have 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 uh, asked uh, people to stay at home and keep the social distance and wear the face mask, and uh, I think this is a very important way to prevent and control this uh, uh, virus spreading. So uh, finally, I would like to thanks for for these collaborators and our students and these researchers and also our families and very uh, thank you for your listening okay